we have a chat window. So if Hi. there's any trouble with audio, um, let me know in chat. He just said hi, so he's there. Hello, hello, <laughs> hi. Oh, oh, good. Okay. All right, hang on, I got a wrinkle. There we go. Can't be wrinkly. Cool. Okay, it's ten. Let's go ahead and start. Um, thank you, everyone. I've been following along over the past day to kind of try to catch up in the FPGA channel. So it sounds like there's a lot of things going on. Um, so Anshul. Please tell us uh, what you've been up to, what you are going to do, and uh, any roadblocks or uh, resources you need. Yeah. Um, BB frame uh, formation module, I have completed the test bench for unit testing. So now I have um, that um, XAGSE encoder uh, module plus test bench that's ready. BB frame formation test bench plus module that's ready. Now, <clears throat> I want to, before integrating this and um, with other modules, uh, now I want it uh, to understand how I can, uh, how I can bring all the components together. So I had a discussion with Thomas and Suoto. So right now uh, I am the Thomas part that implements JESD link that's a critical component after the TVP FPGA. So I've taken his project, I'm trying to build that, and then I will test it. Once that's done, uh, then my plan is to take Suoto's TVP FPGA, uh, combine that and Thomas's project, and then form a stream. And then I will uh, include my GS encoder and BB header before TVP FPGA to do the complete path. So yeah, for next week, my priority is to get Thomas project up and running and start testing on it. All right, fantastic. Is there any resources you need or any anything in your way? I mean, these guys are brilliant. Whenever I ping them, I do get reply within a day. So absolutely going fine. Oh, very good. Thank you. All right, uh, Thomas. Hello. Um, yeah, I haven't. I had a chance to do too much at the moment. Um, the main thing has been the JSD interface that Anshul has mentioned. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's going to work or be pretty close to working. Um, fingers crossed there. Um, and then yeah, I think going forward, I think my main task will just be on call for Anshul and helping him wherever he needs it. Um, yeah. Oh, very good. Thank you so much. Andre? Um, hi. Um, so this week, um, I've been using um, the ZC706 card. Uh, yeah, I got one one set of parameters to work. I need to test um, other, uh, yeah, other parameters, um, other um, arrangements and things like that, basically. Um, yeah, it, it, now it's a bit of Python stuff, just writing, uh, generating data and things like that. Uh, and I also want to um, consolidate because there is some, I, I, I think I can push to the um, repository now. Uh, I have a branch that's called um, I don't remember exactly. It's something GC706. Um, yeah, I just want to push and have it there so others can use. And um, there's also at least uh, the Peta uh, Linux commands I used. Um, that's that's about it, really. OK, any uh, any resources you need or anything in your way? Uh, no, no, that, uh, I, uh, I am using the, wait, there's an alarm here. Uh, so I'm using the card if Anshu needs, then yeah, it, yeah that might um, be an issue. But I think um, uh, there is a way to boot uh, via TFTP or things like that. So if we have, I think it is possible to uh, say a multiplex 
Um, I'm not too sure how to do that though. Like the technical side, I know it is possible, I just don't know how to do. Uh, generally use on weekends or weekdays? I, 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 whenever I have like an idea, then I, I log in and see okay. if there's anyone. <laughs> you can, um, if you log in, um, in uh, show cook hat, I, I, you can use W to see who's logged in or yep. uh, yeah, see the processes. Like if, if I don't have the hardware server, um, you can mm -hmm. use and likewise, I, I will check. I, I do check if there's anyone logged in and using hardware server and things like that. Okay, and one more question, Andre. Uh, with regards to Peta Linux, it's the standard Peta Linux uh, that you have built, downloaded the code, built it. Uh, that's all. It, it's not ADI specific. Uh, no, I. So I did many combinations. The ones that worked, were, I basically got the BSP from Xanix website, and so then you can Peta Linux dash create dash T project and then reference that. And then in the next step, it's Petalinus config and then you pass the path to the Vivado thing that I, I wanna submit. Like basically they access a the hardware definition. So Petalinux is from a normal, uh, it's, it's from a Linux website. Linux, which part? Uh, where you downloaded the Peta Linux? Oh, uh, from Xilinx. From Xilinx. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. It sounds like. Um... Sounds like we're in decent shape. Um, for next weekend for Ham Expo, um, what I'm going to do starting today is to outline a uh, schedule of the things that I know are happening. And then we have a lot of time to, um, to show up and show off the things that we're doing and to talk about what we've accomplished and what we have planned. So my goal for this is to make this fun and enjoyable. Um, the crowd will be um, pretty well uh, well informed of ham radio in general. It tends to be uh, a crowd of mostly extra class hams. There's a lot from the United States, but in the past three or four events, um, there's been well over 100 countries represented. So it's a good uh, group to present technical things to. I do not expect the sorts of platform problems that happened um, in March to happen again. Um, that's going to be a much simpler um, virtual integration for, for Ham Expo. So if you would like to pre-record a video about what you're most excited about and, and then we play that, that would be totally fine. Uh, showing up in person and enjoying uh, interacting with others, if that is something that you're remotely interested in, pun intended, then this is a really, really good opportunity for that. The entire conference is designed around being a virtual experience and um, there's a lot of excitement about the FPGA work and the advanced digital work. So I've been trying very hard to talk about it amongst as wide a groups as possible um, and one of those groups was uh, DEF CON over the past week or so, which was a very good experience. So spread the word about Ham Expo and about the, the sorts of things that we're, that we're doing. I know that the longer goal here is to prepare stuff for uh, Skywater and I'm very excited about that. So please let me know if there's anything that I need to do in order to make that easier uh, and for it to come together faster. In terms of remote lab, we do have a second 706. It's currently in Florida, and we are in the process of moving that and setting up a, a, another remote lab. Um, so we're going to move the equipment that's in Florida. We're going to move it a little bit further west to, to Arkansas. That's not going to happen, though, for a couple of months. So if we need another station, then we'll have to do something in, in between. And we might be able to just simply have the, that board 
uh, shipped to us in San Diego and set it up in a parallel virtual machine. That may be something that we can do if it becomes uh, a contention issue, a uh, resource issue. We kind of anticipated that people would just work together to figure out if they were, um, you know, coordinate over Slack or, or, or like what we just did, you know, uh, check and see if somebody's actively using it uh, by logging into ChacoCat. Um, so I'll, I'll see what I can do about setting up something uh, in the meantime. It, it may, be, may be possible to, to do that. All right, any, any questions about Ham Expo? I'm gonna start drawing up like a schedule and opportunities for presentations. This is, again, supposed to be fun. And if fun for you is talking live to people, then, then this is your, your chance. It's a real good chance out of the year. Um, and if you'd like to pre-record something, then I will show it uh, throughout the weekend. Uh, so any any questions or desires or uh, uh, you know any any sort of comment at all about Ham Expo? It, we can use the uh, booth rep accounts. Yes. Is, is it okay? Yes, as far yes, those are I, what I did is I just pre-filled with a with a login and a password booth accounts to where you could be a booth representative mm -hmm. uh, and you can also use this room that we're using right right now and those don't don't appear to be connected as far as i can tell yet uh, i'm going to ask um, but go ahead and explore so log in with any of those that are that are not being used again we might have to coordinate over slack to figure out who's who um, but i just went ahead and pre-filled them mm -hmm. in to so that we could we could have them instead of ask, trying to ask people who wants to commit, because I know that commitment is, is very tricky. So yes, please use the booth rep accounts uh, whenever you, you like, and um, please use the whereby room, this particular room. Uh, we have one room. So some of the, some of the exhibitors have up to four rooms or, uh, or more, uh, but we have, we have one, which is uh, this one. Um, and that can be used just like it looks just like zoom so so far uh, you can share a screen you can have a chat you have a list of the people camera and microphone it seems like the same design pattern as as all of the other um, video conferencing things so so yes this is this is for you to use throughout the weekend to show off your work All right, any other questions on Ham Expo? I will try very hard to push out a uh, preliminary schedule, you know, that shows some of the things that are that we've already committed to. And uh, yeah, any anywhere you want to present your work and talk about this project or any other related project in open source, those are all welcome. So anything else that you're actively involved in and you want to present through either the booth or the whereby, it's welcome. And then uh, Paul, mm -hmm. th thanks for joining us. Do you have any um, have anything for the stand-up? No, uh, just checking to see if anything needed to be worried about at the remote lab. Seems like it survived being mostly unattended for a week. Yeah, that's a good sign. Um, yeah, the only thing that we might wanna talk about uh, is adding the 706 from Florida uh, earlier than September <laughs> to the uh, to the mix, uh, just in case. It, that, would be, that would be easy. Just getting it here is all okay. that's required. Okay. All right. I will. I will get on that because I think it might might help. Um, and then then we can we can go ahead and move it to uh, to Remote Lab South in September. So I'll I'll take that and we'll uh, we'll get it up and running as quick as I can. Cool. All right. Any... Didn't really, In... yeah. Sorry, we didn't really uh, reckon with the fact that the test equipment has a lot of state. So if you have to set up a bunch of stuff in the in the development board, then sharing it from hour to hour is really kind of painful. True. I I did not anticipate that myself. So um, now that we've now that we can see that it that it uh, might be an issue. So fortunately, we have the equipment to to add to it and to uh, to do things in parallel. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try to find 
uh, basically how to boot the card in the analog devices design. Um, basically, you, there is a Peta Linux boot command. If if we can boot uh, in the analog devices uh, image or you know whatever image, then we don't need physically to switch, uh, change the switcher. You know, um, I'm gonna have a look into that. Okay, thank you. It, it, yeah, it's easier to share then. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, and and then writing all of this down to where people like me that are following along behind at somewhat of a distance that then I know how to how to do it. That would be great. So I could help uh, quicker and better. Yeah, that's what my aim was to get uh, Peta Linux image provided by ADI so that it has all the relevant drivers. And that's what I do. Yeah. I don't want it to wipe uh, Andre's image because he's using some other one. I'm right. Other one. <laughs> yeah, fully understand. All right. Look forward to mm -hmm. looking forward to getting that uh, resolved. That'd be super helpful. All right. Any anything else that anyone needs me to do? I should have a question. Um, because as I understand it, Andre is not necessarily using the analog devices um, hardware. So is there maybe another Xilinx or a sync board? It's not the specific ZC706 that could be used. Yes, we have a ZCU106, the ultra scale board. It does not have a radio on it. Um, and that's sitting right by the uh, the 706. So we do have, have that one and the the uh, virtual machine that that one's connected to is called Karapi. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can look into that to sort of um, not not liberate. And um, yeah, you, you get the idea, right? To free the the analog devices uh, hardware. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Do you have any? Uh, uh, comment about the status of Karapi? Is it ready to go? I believe the board is turned off at the moment, but turning after turning it on, it should be ready to go. Okay, so all, like all the USB mapping mm -hmm. has been done and et cetera. I believe so. I don't know how much. I'll have to check the notes and see if we actually tested that. I, I know I didn't. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to write that down and we can try to, to get that done today. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. If there's anything else that occurs to you that you need taken care of or help with or resources, just let me know. And I will let's end the meeting and get on with our day. Thank you, everyone. This has been a uh, Right. Super fun week uh, in a lot of ways. Very tiring uh, to, to do a, a show <laughs> right before another show. I'm, I am very, very glad that we didn't try to do a booth or an exhibit at DEF CON in addition to Ham Expo. Uh, maybe next year because there, there is a really interesting opportunity at DEF CON called uh, Demo Labs or Demonstration Labs. And this may be a really good fit for the work that we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. These are open source projects that have uh, some impact in the uh, you know, InfoSec and cybersecurity world, but they uh, off, very often include wireless and digital signal processing projects. Uh, and it's usually a very large crowd of upwards to 30,000, um, very technical people and very enthusiastic about open source. So maybe next year uh, might be a good thing to, to think about. All right, I'm going to stop recording and head off to take care of these action items.